Hello guys, hope you're doing all well. Uh, just uh, wanted to share with you my reviews on this new movie, The Fall Guy. I just saw it today, featuring Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt. Uh, it's a good take on the stunt men's and how their life goes around. The story is a bit off track, I would say, but all in all, in a good way, talking about the stunt men's, putting the limelight on them <sighs> was a new thing to see on the screen as well. Yeah, I remember the the moment Ryan Gosling saying, no, the Oscars don't, there's no uh, nominees for Oscars for stunt doubles. That was a good touch as well. And uh, yeah, I know I'm pausing a bit. My English sucks. Anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. So, yeah, I just um, wanted to go on the check on the Wikipedia and uh, just see what the buzz is all about. Yeah, you might uh, see the budget. It's a really heavy budget film, by the way. The looks of uh, it stunts absolutely amazing. The visuals, the way everything is executed, especially the rolling of the car. Um, okay, story. The cast, I forgot their names. So Cold Seavers, a season action stuntman. Played by Ryan Gosling, of course. So I'll go by the cast. Cast. Uh, because the they were the backbone of the film. Ryan Gosling, of course. The main lead. Emily Blunt. I think the dialogue delivery between both of the hero and the hero and the actor and the actress, the star leads. Um, some of it uh, looked more like on the go. The conversation seemed uh, really fast and natural, unlike mine, of course. But uh, they were so natural, just like a boyfriend talks to a girlfriend or whatever the relationship was. Uh, about and there about Aaron, the Tom Ryder, a famous action film star. Uh, my brother told me about he was the Quicksilver in Marvels. I I thought he was um, Jake Paul for some reason. I don't know why. I think I'm stupid as well. Seeing Jake Paul everywhere, or always. Can I say? <laughs> he did a good role. Actually, you could say if he was he was there in the film. The twist about uh, making uh, Cold Seavers fall and the back problem and the twist that twist at the end twist twist was uh, really interesting Tom Ryder did a really good job also from Tom Ryder when uh, Cold Seavers aka Ryan Gosling comes back after 18 months when uh, Ryan, Tom Ryder's producer the next cast we're going to talk about Hannah calls, known as Gail Meyer in the film, calls to tell that her lead, 
the lead actress is gonna direct she's gonna have the breakthrough for the next big film uh, sorry about the noises uh, for the breakthrough she's gonna direct it um, so she called and then actually I'm trying to talk about the screen thing that they do the way they scan Ryan Gosling for the screen to get his visuals so that they can do the 3D thing and put dots and stuff like that so Ryan Gosling said I'm gonna finish what I started about Tom Ryder that oh this is a nice stuff Ryan Gosling aka Cole Seaver said uh, it's gonna be boring if you really think mm, he didn't say that I'm sorry I said that he said that uh, it's gonna be boring I mean he said that Tom oh this is good stuff make my face into Tom Cruise that was really some stuff to look at No, why did I take so long to tell this thing? <sighs> oh, my skills are getting better, I guess. The opposite, the opposite. Please don't think I have ADHD. I'm already thinking about the comments. You are the best, ZMA. Just remember that you're gonna rule the world. Yeah, the producer and the Tom Ryder were the villains. They did a great job of holding the film together. And, uh... Iggy Stars, played by Teresa Farmer, had a really good uh, action scene with the sword. And, uh, Tom's personal assistant, Al Millen. Uh, okay. I think she got her name in, as a producer and the dogs thing with uh, with Alma Willen and Stephanie Sue sorry Stephanie if I said your name wrong way amazing dog, dog sequence the way the French dog attacky uh, bon way <laughs> I don't know my French a lot that was a really good touch and uh, yeah, that's the budget if you think why am I not moving there no so such such uh, amazing things in the internet well it's a free place and and uh, I hope the budget talking about the budget the film's budget was great but my budget is kind of kind of any mini uh, I'm sorry about that. So Winston Duke as Dan Tucker Cole's longtime friend and stunt coordinator. Yep, the guy from Wakanda. His use of uh, dialogue from famous films, the Rocky one and stuff, as motivation. And uh, oh, I didn't know that. Going through the Wikipedia that. Lee Majors and Heather Thomas, who starred as Colt Seavers and Jody Banks, respectively, in the ori or original television series. Oh, reprised their roles in mid credit scenes with Major credited as The Fall Guy. Well, Jason Omoa has an uncredited appearance as himself. Yeah, at the end, Jason Momoa does his thing. I think he is a bit. Teeny bitsies try a little bit hard, like me. Although he's established or trying to establish himself. Yeah, he's acting. Just... It felt like Fast and Furious is acting. He's being more free. So, how much time did it take in July 2010? Oh my god, the Los Angeles 
reported that the film based 1980s series The Fall Guy was in development. DreamWorks had teamed up with producers Walter F. Parks and Laurie McDonald on the project and Martin Campbell was in talks to direct the film. DreamWorks through the Walt Disney, Walt Disney Studios Touchstone Pictures distribution label was to release the film. Okay, it's 2010. In North America, Latin America, Russia, Australia, and Asia, while Mr. Smith Entertainment, blah blah blah. Ah, okay, it's drama about distribution and stuff. In September 2013, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, oh nice, okay. MCG. In September 2020, Ryan Gosling, director David Leach, and writer Drew Pierce were said to be working. Okay, that's a different leap. I think at the time, 2013, Dwayne Johnson was uh, really. F I mean, he was killing all the films. If he had done it, it would have been a banger. In September, Ryan Gosling. Uh, director David Leach and writer Drew Pierce coming back to the lines were said to be working on an unnamed stuntman film that had been picked by Universal Pictures. In May, it was confirmed this project was a film adaptation of The Fall Guy 2022, May 2022. Speaking about that, loosely based on the TV series, the film is produced by Universal with Leach's A7 North Productions, of course and Gosling's Entertainment 360 with Leach and Kelly McMore using alongside Gosling and Guy Monkis. Okay, I don't want to read about that. Oh my god, nice. Australian government and New South Wales state authorities added funds to the production of two Australian 30 million and Australian 40.5 million respectively with Paul Fletcher Australia's Federal Minister for Communications Urban Infrastructure and Cities and Arts estimating a boom to the local economy over a thousand Australian cash and crew and more than three thousand fifteen Australian film extras credit goes to them amazing job on the stunts on the explosions on on everything Amazing job, I mean, congratulations to the minister and all the people behind it. Okay, Emily Bond was cast in August 2022. Aaron Taylor Johnson is definitely to join in October and Winston Duke, Hannah Weddingham and Tarsa Barmer cast the following month. Gosling and Blunt said that they took the inspiration from inspiration from Leach and this producer wife Kelly Moring for the romantic relationship between their characters. Okay. Uh, Blunt's original role was makeup artist, but it was rewritten to be a first time director before she received a draft of the script. Okay. Blunt had a, Blunt had some input on the character setting. We all kind of built her together because I think maybe in the original script she was quite severe and that sort of tough director. She thought it was more interesting to see someone who is in a situation where they are way over their head. For the character Blunt took some inspiration from the director Greta Garrick, Garrick, I'm sorry, pronouncing it wrong, and several other people she had met. Yeah, our character was a bit over the head and she tried to make it interesting. Lots of uh, different feelings as a director, the way she was calm in situations and how she dealt with it. It was a different character, different point of view, different way of taking the lead. You could say it's a fine movie, or but she took it a little different, a little adding some chilies and making it a bit zestier, I may say. I don't know if you need chili for that stuff. Okay, filming. Okay. There was a record. They were saying about the record. There's some record about something. Uh, 
Okay, so the Variety and the Hollywood reported that the film had a production budget of $130 million. Deadline Hollywood Old also stated it's $130 million production. After Australian tax credit, though added that some have heard the production cost was even higher. Okay, above $150 million. Damn, that could have been higher than the film itself. The film used practical stunts with highly choreographed action sequences. Lee stated it was the love letter to stunts. We knew we had to be authentic in that world. It broke a Guinness World Record for the most cannon rolls in a car, with eight and a half rolls performed by stunt driver Log Logan Holiday. Congratulations! This movie was for you, and in fact, for all the guys, all the stunt doubles. That's why it's my <laughs> longest weird video, I guess. Everybody's gonna hate it. Anyways, credit goes to you, all the guys on the back who get the hits since BC, since the movies started, all the mega movies receiving so many awards, and yeah, I know Hollywood is a bit boring nowadays, not so much interesting stuff, known so much script, stories, interesting stuff, but Taking out issues that are really going to recognize us about the stunt doubles and all the things. And using everything authentic, even if it is more than the budget. I think even if it was worth more than $150 million, credit goes to Ryan, uh, Mr. Leach and her wife for, uh, I thought... There might be some CGI and stuff, but credit goes to them for using as much authenticity as possible. You can feel it in the film, as opposed to many films nowadays using uh, shitty AI or shitty CGI. Some are good. Yeah, I agree. Most of them are half works. It was a really, um, by reading that, the choreography and everything and giving them a love letter, really, really amazing thing and having a Guinness World Record. The canon, I remember him, uh, Ryan Gosling, pressing the canon and at the end credits, they also show us a Logan Holiday doing this uh, stunt and... Uh, everything all the credit goes to the amazing team behind this uh the music uh all all the music all the i must say all the songs were amazing so release anything interesting to say about the release okay 20 minutes extra Okay. How much is it earning? It might be on the starting. Um, one seventy million dollars. Okay, I think. Not so much, but reviews. Rotten Tomatoes, 81%. That's good. Uh, what does the consensus read? With action, comedy, romance, and a pair of marvelously matched stars, The Fall Guy might be a rare mainstream movie with something to entertain everyone. I agree, totally agree. Metacritic says, which uses a weighted average, assigned the film a score of 73 out of 100. That's... That's hard to get. Metacritic are always, always, they will cut anything they can. Generally favorable reviews. Audiences pulled by Cinema Score give the film an average of A minus. Wow, on an A plus to F scale. While those pulled that post track gave it ninety percent. I'm amazed by a film getting so much uh, positive reviews. A uh, Roger Roger Ebert, who doesn't know about them. The writer, famous writer, 
the critic of movies. What does they say? Brian Talarico said that the Fall Guy feels like a pushback against all the CGI heavy, characterless, humorless rock blusters, blockbusters that have been coming off the content production line. Agree with them. Agree with Brain. Brian, I'm sorry I pronounced your name. <laughs> I know. I suck. I know. I'm the best. <laughs> Anyways, and provides audience with that too often feels like a secondary concern in big movies lately fun. 100% agree. It's a really fun movie to watch. Everything is in there for family. It's a family friendly movie in nowadays culture. I know there's a bit kissing scenes, I know. But not. Yeah, this is what American movies were as to what they are trying to be. They don't need to try anything. They are what they are, but they are trying it in the wrong way, just like Brian's saying. Uh, using secondary concern and uh, make big movies lately fun. You don't need so much budget. I know this is a special love letter for stuntmen, but using so much budget to make a movie that is that has no fun and an ad uh, that is like uh, I quote what I quote what Brian said: CGI heavy, characterless, humorless. It just doesn't bring so much life into it. The amount of characters used, Jason Momoa appearing itself. So much life is there, so much characters, the dogs. I know. I might have better words to choose. But you get the point what I'm trying to say here. I'm not saying to you to watch, go watch it. I'm just trying to uh, get in my thoughts right and um, just say that the movie was uh, really fun. The word F-U-N is enough, I guess. IGN called the film as self-reflexive love letter to the Hollywood stunt work. 100% agree. And praise Gosling Blunt's performances and chemistry. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> the very, um, everybody remembers uh, Emily Blunt. Who doesn't? I remember her first uh, in The Edge of Tomorrow. The, her uh, two hands stand. And the repeat repetition of that stuff from there i saw her and i really wanted to see her action and uh, that we saw when uh she beat the shit out out of ryan gosling when he was dead and she thought she was in uh a shock and did a really uh nice action scene in her cart i'm sorry i'm saying cart on uh, the wheels wheel cart <gasps> oh my god the, the house on the wheels and uh, in Observer Oliver Johns opined that rather than indic Hollywood's words and sticks the film instead echoes them if the fall guy reflects how Hollywood reviews women directors it's a little surprise there are so few of them Okay, Oliver Jones. Um, okay, I might end with Oliver Jones' quote. Rather than indicate Hollywood's worst instincts, the film is that echoes them. If only reflects how Hollywood views women directors, it's a little surprised there's so few of them. Okay, Oliver Jones has gone a bit deeper, and uh, his view is one of many views of critics, I take it, and uh, kind of not approve it, but it's a nice way to see the things. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the film, if you've seen it, and if I haven't seen it, go watch it. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. And as for the reading, how much reading I will give? I'll, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Uh, oh, till then, 
Uh, enjoy, Rose. Enjoy.